Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be checking out the Volt 2 from Universal Audio. This is a two-channel bus-powered USB audio interface with built-in analog tone shaping. So let's jump right into it. Boom! With a second unboxing angle. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So a lovely matte black box here. Let's open it up. Welcome to Volt! And there it is suspended inside. Let's see if we can get this out very carefully. Boom. And we've got a container at the bottom there. Nothing else in the box but the, the silica gel there. All right, so let's take a look at the interface. There it is. Very small. Very sleek. Jeez. Yeah, they say it's supposed to have a like an industrial kind of design. That's very nice and it does match my other interface. The the silver, I really like that. And the, the gray finish is also very nice. Let's see what comes in the package. We've got a USB to USB-C. So this is a USB-C interface. They said it's bus powered, which means that it should be powered by the computer itself, right? By the USB connection. But it also does have a power supply there. So that is very interesting. It also has an on off switch. So we'll see what that's about. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it does have a separate USB to AC here. So that must be the AC bus power that it uses. So you have one USB-C cable connection for the information, the audio information, and then you have another to actually power the unit. Interesting. Well, I'm really excited to get started and to get some sounds with it. On the front, we have a gain knob. Again, oh, I like the feel of that. There's a bit of resistance. We have the vintage button. Oh. Doesn't push in very, very far, but that's gonna light up for the vintage mode. I did a video of how to make any sound older. So I'm really curious what they did on the vintage mode, if there's some kind of EQ or some sort of tube saturation. But if you're interested in my methods of how to make something sound older, you can check out this video. Next to that, we've got instrument. So that's probably for the, the direct input here. If you're going to record guitar directly into the combi jack. And then next to that, we have 48 volts of phantom power, which is probably going to apply to both channels. Below that, we have a host or direct button. Not sure what that does yet. We have a dial for our monitor output. And then we've got a headphone amplifier as well. So all these knobs feel very nice, very nice and expensive. They have a good resistance to them. You know, they don't, they're not stepped and they aren't, you know, they're not flying all over the place. So this does feel like a well-built unit. So on the back, we've got a power switch. We've got the DC power. We've got USB-C. We've got MIDI in and out, and we've got quarter inch inputs for our monitoring left and right. So a pretty simple USB audio interface. I remember having one of the Focusrite Clarets where they had the air button. I think that that was a really popular mode that they started to bring into other lines. So having the choice of just like an AB is, is really popular. You know, it gives you a little bit of control. Do I like this one or do I like this one? And it allows you to make a choice. So I really like that they've incorporated that. Vintage is kind of a buzzword in audio. Uh, you know, we like things that are older because they're fun and expensive and they have vibe. But we're gonna see what that vintage button does. I'm really excited about that. All right, so for our first sound example, let's do some drums. I'm pretty excited because I don't get to play drums that often, and it just so happens to be in a big room, so I couldn't resist playing one of my favorites. Let's check it out.
So it turns out I forgot to throw the Volt into instrument mode to record the slide, and doing so ended up being rather noisy, which may just be from the instrument itself. So here's a quick example of the instrument mode with DI'd electric guitar. Now that we've heard a few sound examples, let's take a look at the technical side of the interface with Room EQ Wizard. Here we can compare two modes of the Volt 2 with frequency response charts. Then we can compare this result with another interface to get an idea of how the Volt 2 stacks up on the desktop interface market. All right, so here we're taking a look at the Volt 2 in Room EQ Wizard. This is a piece of software that I'm learning to use and we're using it to give us a whole bunch of analytical information about your sound card or audio interface. Now this line shows the sound pressure level frequency response of the Volt 2. And as we can see, it's flat down to single digit Hertz and there's a steep roll off to 20 K up in the high end. So it's a shockingly flat frequency response curve, very impressive, but I was most curious to see how does this compare with the vintage mode and look at this. The vintage mode has a steeper slope on the low frequencies. We don't get as much information down in the single digits. There's also a small wide boost centered around 60 Hertz. The mids are quite flat and look at what's going on upwards of 2K. We get a 2 dB boost centered around 6 to 7K followed by a steep high frequency roll off right to 20K. So how does this compare with other interfaces? Let's check that out, but let's also switch over to the vintage mode for this voiceover. Boom, vintage mode. Okay, we're gonna compare the Volt 2 with two other interfaces. This is the Audent Evo 8. It's very, very flat as well, with a little bit of a wiggle up on the high end, and it goes just past 20K here. So we'll compare that to the Volt in regular mode. So we can see what's going on by checking out the distortion tab in Room EQ Wizard. Let's flip over to the Volt 2 where you can see each order of harmonics and the total harmonic distortion, which we can see there as 0.0026% measured at one kilohertz. If we flip over to the vintage mode, we can see that all those harmonics are boosted, which is to be expected if they're modeling this after the 610 tube preamp. And again, we see the total harmonic distortion has increased as well. Let's flip over to the other interface to see how this unit compares. So here's the Volt 2, and we're going over to the Evo 8. Wow, the harmonics are very spread out. So what's this one? That's the total harmonic distortion. So it's much higher at 0.05 as opposed to 0.0028 on the Volt. We can also see the harmonics are spread out. The third harmonic is accented in the Evo 8, and it definitely sits outside of the pack. Let's flip over to the Antelope D4. This one is all over the place. This is the interface that I use and running it through here is just wild. If we go back over to the SPL, look at that. Look at that. Compare that to how flat the Volt is. This one has a huge accentuation over 10 dB at around 50 Hertz. What's going on there? I don't know if I did something wrong in the calibration because this one looks completely different. If you have any experience with this, please let me know what's going on here. Because again, we have this, you know, almost at 3K point here that's then repeated. You know, is that almost an octave? 2.7, 5.4. You can see that there's like a, a comb filtering or something going on here where we're getting a boost there and then the, the harmonics of each one. So that, that is just so wild to look at in comparison to the others. You know, the, the Volt 2 in vintage mode has some slight boost there, but it looks like what you would see 
uh, from an EQ with a wide boost, right? Whereas this <laughs> looks like something's going on there. I might have to ask Antelope about that. So this made me curious to see if there's any differences between channel one and two. And on the Volt, you can see that they are actually pretty consistent. But something weird happens when we go to the vintage mode. Here's that curve that we saw before, a little bit of a bump in the low end and a more dramatic bump in the high end. When we go to channel two, we can see that the bass is extended. We get a little bit more bass extension and we also get actually a larger boost there centering around 30 hertz as opposed to upwards of 60 hertz. So that's quite a dramatic difference. So I went ahead and I tested my antelope interface and get a load of this. Here's that wacky curve that we saw from before and it's pretty much identical on input two, but when we go to input three, look at that. It's completely different. So input three and input four are relatively the same, but input one and input two are the same, but vastly different from inputs three and four. So I don't know if that's to do with the tolerance of the components, you know, how each one is slightly different from the other, but because they're in pairs, makes me think there's something else going on here. Maybe there's different preamps within this unit. If you guys have any ideas as to why that is, let me know in the comments. So thank you for watching this video. If you did like it, consider subscribing, leave a like, and give me a comment of what you liked most and what you'd like to see next on the channel. I read everyone and I truly appreciate it. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. I wouldn't blame you if you walk away And I couldn't hate you if you don't feel the same